Hello and welcome to another indie horror game. This time I'll be playing a game called The Raven, a short narrative horror experience based on the poem by Edgar Allan Poe. If you want to play it for yourselves, check the description, but otherwise, I really hope you enjoy the video. Here we go, this is The Raven. So, Ephraim, a man burdened by grief after the loss of his beloved Lenore, drowns his sorrows in alcohol as an escape. But one day, while perusing a mysterious book of forgotten science, he's interrupted by the visit of a majestic raven. Alright. November 1854. In the stillness of the night lies my afflicted heart, for I have lost my beloved, my sweet Lenore. In her tomb rests her motionless and cold beauty, and my soul is left alone in the deepest agony. How to move forward without her warm embrace? How to find light amidst this twilight's trace? For her smile and her love were my sole reason to be. And now her absence makes me long to fade and flee. Yet I shall carry on, though my heart tears apart with pain, seeking solace in the memories of our love's remain. For though my beloved has gone far away, her love shall live forever in my shattered heart's array. Let death not be the end of our true love's accord, but the beginning of an eternity together in a sincerer world. While here on earth darkness veils me with its chilling shade, your light shall keep shining in my soul like a crimson blade. And as I await the moment to be with you in eternal space, your memory shall stay alive in my heart, my divine grace. Aww, that's nice. <laughs> he certainly has a way with words, doesn't he? Alright. Seems like it's going to be an interesting take on it. I was really, really enjoying the music there. Why did it just cut off? Anyway, December 1854. Is this real? I cannot escape this pain. Time has halted. How can I carry on? Why can't I remember everything clearly? Why do I only have these blurry and fragmented images? Where are you, my love? Come back, I beseech! How can I move forward without you? How can I find purpose in life after losing you? Lenore! Alright, okay. Is some of this going to be first person? Oh. That must be the book. Okay, it is, yeah. Uh, De prestigis daemonum. Christianity embraces an unwavering faith where philosophers like Aristotle and the Peripatetics strive to uphold conflicting opinions about the nature of things. However, I cannot endorse any of the theories about demons put forth by Plato, Porphyry, Plotinus, Jamplicus, and others, who, though they have written extensively about demons, have created more fantasies than realities. Therefore, I cannot subscribe to their views, even though they have been supported by learned men. As a result, I worship the Almighty God, the architect of the universe, who, before creating this admirably adorned world with the orders of wondrous spirits, had created these incorporeal beings, as testified by the divine messengers sent to us through Moses for a long time. In the deep of the night, when shadows lengthen and fears lurk, this story comes to life. I firmly believe in the accounts told by those who spoke with God through the words of ancient sacred texts. It was a time of benevolent beings who, from the heights of goodness, ruled over all that existed. They were intelligent beings, though without physical form, in tune with the divine nature, limited yet conformed to it. 
God created and cared for them so that they, in turn, would worship and adore him. He bestowed upon them outstanding intelligence, magnificent consciousness, and eternal knowledge. Their souls shone like rays of divine light emanating from the true source of eternal faith. Okay. What does all this mean? I fail to comprehend this tome. It's strange and haunting pages, so uncertainty within me. Drinking wine does little to soothe the growing unease. <laughs> I bet. Time passes and my interest in the book gradually wanes. Ooh. Someone's at the door. A loud knocking at my door startles me, making the book fall from my hands. I try to silence the incessant pounding of my heart to no avail. Who could it be at this hour of the night? It's the raven with a delivery. Okay, here we are. All right, so it's uh, it's going to be a sort of third person fixed camera angle tank control horror game. Yeah, why not? Why not? All right, so over here. Pardon, fair lady or noble sir. I beseech your pardon for the delay. I must confess slumber overcame me, and I did not perceive your knocks at my door. There's no one there, is there? Hesitant, I open the door, only to find a dark and cold hallway. Lenore, I murmured, and the echo returned it in a chilling whisper. Is this a dream? Or an endless nightmare? Nice. So, let's see, let's explore, shall we? Yeah, what? What's this? I noticed there was a guy in the back corner. Is it a, a model? A mannequin or something? I, I hope so, right? I, oh, what was that? Could it have been just the wind? No, it can't be the wind. That thud was too clear. Someone has knocked on my window. Alright. Well, I don't see anyone, but maybe we should go and check. I contemplated the unfathomable blackness for a long while. The wind howled fiercely, and I could also perceive the first drops of rain falling. Only the wind, and nothing more, I thought, still doubtful of my own sanity. With reluctance, I closed the window and decided to return to my chair. I suppose there's more of the book that we want to read, right? Let's see how many more- Whoa! Philosopher's names I can mispronounce. Right, that'll be the raven! Leaving a feather, by the looks of it. Without a trace of reverence, an ominous bird of yore burst into the room. It perched upon the bust of Pallas, motionless like a statue. I regained composure and, in my role as a host, approached the horrid raven. Even with your crest maimed and severed, art thou not a coward? O oh, raven of horrifying aspect that wanders from night's Plutonian shore. Tell me, what is thy lordly name from night's Plutonian shore? <laughs> Quoth the raven, nevermore. <laughs> He's going to be doing a lot of that, I think. I was perplexed by the unheard of eloquence of this ominous bird of yore. However, its vague and irrelevant response left me somewhat indifferent. Has any living being had the privilege to witness such an act? Bird or beast perched upon the sculpted bust of Pallas with such disquieting name? Nevermore. I observed the bird for a while, barely whispering. I uttered the following words. Other friends have forsaken me before. Tomorrow he shall leave me as well. Just as my hopes have done. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Yeah. Surely, what it says is all it knows. A single repertoire of words learned from some wretched master whom it must have harassed relentlessly. <laughs> Think of all those broken windows! Until its dirges bore only one meaning. Until the chance of its hope 
carried that melancholy burden of nevermore. <laughs> I think you've had too much to drink. However, the presence of this ebony bird drew a smile upon my face. Did God grant me this moment to forget, even if briefly, the absence of my beloved? Whatever the reason may be, I must displace my chair for a better view of the raven. Alright. Okay, let's go displace my chair. <laughs> Alright. Perched upon the bust of Pallas, the bird, whose eyes seemed like burning embers, peered into the depths of my soul. Weaving one fantasy after another, I found myself sketching the raven on the pages of my diary. In that moment, the atmosphere seemed to grow denser, infused with an invisible incense, as the steps of Seraphs resounded on the carpeted floor. Wretch! Your god has granted you respite through these angels. A respite of Nepenthe for your memories of Lenore. Hasten, oh hasten this sweet Nepenthe, and forget your absent beloved Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Nepenthe's a drug that makes you forget, I think. Prophet, thing of evil, whether bird or devil, sent by the tempter, or cast upon this haunted refuge by the storm. Yeah, I think that's more likely. Prophet, tell me, I beseech you, is there balm in Gilead? Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, thing of evil, whether bird or devil, by that firmament stretching above our heads. By that god we both adore. Tell this sorrow-laden soul, if in the distant Eden this weary soul shall find its beloved. If this weary soul shall find its beloved, whom angels called Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend. He's had enough. Fly back into the tempest, to the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of the lies your spirit has spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, you guessed it, nevermore. <laughs> oh, he's either passed out or died. Okay. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting. Still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas. On the doorframe of my room. Its eyes have the appearance of a meditating demon. Its shadow stretches across the carpeted floor, and my soul. Deep within that shadow remains imprisoned, unable to break free. Nevermore. Never <coughs> and is that the end? Because I think that might be the end. It is, in fact, the end. That was The Raven, everyone. Leave your thoughts down below in the comments, like or dislike the video. What did you think? Uh, I thought this was lacking in its gameplay, but overall, it was an interesting take on a very famous poem and an interesting way of experiencing it. But yeah, I just wish there was a little bit more to do gameplay-wise. Maybe there could have been more things to inspect around the room or a couple of puzzles in between the passages of the poem. But I like its style. I like... I like the visuals, I think the black and white and even the pixelation to an extent fits with the poem pretty well, and Edgar Allan Poe in general, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, I just think the gameplay is lacking. The gameplay segments as it stands, I mean, they could have been removed to make this a smoother narrative experience, honestly. They didn't really add much, and that's a bit of a shame, but uh, yeah, an interesting way to experience the poem. I don't know if it is word for word, the poem. I think maybe some sections were reworded or maybe removed. I don't know. I'll have to reread it, I suppose. But yeah, an interesting take on it. 
I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to see you back in another video very soon. See you then. Your memory shall stay alive in my heart, my divine grace. Aww, that's nice. <laughs> uh, oh, I was really, really enjoying the music there. Why did it just cut off? I suppose there's more of the book that we want to read, right? Let's see how many more. Whoa! Philosopher's names I can mispronounce. Right, that'll be the raven. <laughs> Quoth the raven, nevermore. <laughs> He's going to be doing a lot of that, I think.